Alright, what's going on guys? Ghost we have been back here with more Descent Um Legends of the Dark. And we are in our second part part two. We're continuing on. Uh did a little bit of change in the table. I'm on a different angle. Last time I was straight on, now I'm off to the side. Um but we're in the same position as we were previously before it was more. We were looking at it from more of this angle. Now we're kind of on a side angle here. Um but we are ready to go here. We have, if I remember correctly, we're starting the third round. Um, our enemy here, which is this zealot, only has three hit points left. So we're hoping to take him out this round. Once we defeat all enemies, then we should be able to uh, move on with continuing to see what we have to do next so we have Varix in front of him and we have Bryn behind him Bryn is already in melee range um, I think we're gonna go with well you know what let's have Bryn start it off I think so Bryn's gonna start it off right behind him there and we will go with uh, we have our weighted warhammer our enemy, we don't know the weakness yet. We haven't tried any other weapons. We know the Warhammer is not... They're not weak to the Warhammer. So why don't we try... What if we go... What if we do a flip? Check out... Let's do some new weapons here for a second. We haven't done that yet. So we're going to get rid of our... Fatigue because we're flipping our card. Our weighted Warhammer, we're going to flip over to the Warden's Blade. Which does slashing damage instead of the crush damage. One hit should take him out then, because that's three. If he's weak to slashing, that'd be four damage. Even with the, even with the um, one block that he might get, that would, should be enough to take him down. We also get two fatigue on this side. During your attack or defense, if you are adjacent to another hero, add a success, which we're not. But I don't think we need to worry about that at this point. So we're gonna try Warding's Blade. So. We drag our girl up to the zealot. We tell him Warden's Blade this time. So we get this a little closer. And we try to see what we could do. So we are still rolling. Remember, the weapon doesn't matter. The die, it's just the character. So we roll a black regardless of the weapon. And we get two successes, which should be more than enough to take this zealot out, hopefully. Two successes, I don't think we need to add anything to it. That should be six damage. If they're weak, it'd be eight damage. They only got three hit points left with one armor. So let's confirm it. And they are weak to slashing. So we do have seven damage, they block one, but obviously we take out this zealot without much problem. Your foe crumbles to the ground, removes orange zealot. And he is removed. Alright, see what happens next. Map time. The clouds over the moon part, illuminating the clearing. A baronial watchtower stands not far away. Place one archway, one chest, one door, and one well. Alright. Alright, and here we go. We got a well, a chest. We have a door and an arch are separate, but you just kind of place it over. And the goal now is enter the watchtower. So this is entering the watchtower that we saw from camp originally when the story started. Some tokens of terrain can give you a clue as to what is inside or what attribute you need to test. Tap on them to preview what could lie within. Just tell us to tap on the chest to learn more about it. So we see by tapping on the chest that the chest looks as rusted, it's so rusted and damaged that no key could open it. Forcing the lid open would require a true test of strength. So we're probably assuming we need might to open that. There's also a well here. The water shimmers, inviting the weary to taste. The door, the heavy door is locked from the inside. And then we still have these trees that we haven't messed with. 
A hero may spend an action to search the tree. All right, so we started with Bryn, and Bryn is near that well. Also, let's see, one, two, three, can't get to the chest. I don't know if Bryn has any reason to... I know the well can help. I think if you drink from the well, you can heal, I believe. You could also put money in the well, which we don't have any. I'm not sure what that is. I think I put a coin in the well and nothing happened, so I don't know. Um, I don't think there's an option to put more in. Maybe as a group. Uh, let's see. Is she, maybe she's going to head toward the chest at least this turn. Maybe if she doesn't get there. So, one, two, three. For her movement, free movement. And then, one, two. She's going to go to the chest for next round. Get that open. Uh, and then we have Varix here, who is at full health. I think Varix is going to look... He's going to search the tree. Why not? Let's mess around with that. One, two. He has one moving point left. So we hit the tree. A hero may spend an action to search the tree. Um, so we have to drag Varix to the tree. Okay. The tree has round green fruit on the lower branches. Plants and mushrooms growing on its side and a sturdy trunk you could climb. Pick the fruit. I believe because I said I have played about half this mission that heals you. We're full health. Forge the plants, I believe that gets us some crafting materials, maybe? And then climb the tree, which we tried to do, but failed. And I remember, which is pretty obvious, you're going to need agility to do that. Both our guys are not very good at agility. I think I'm just going to forge the plants. If we need it, take it. You forge on and around the tree, looking for anything of interest. The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. Five leather and one toxos from some mangy furs. One vigos from some widow's bloom. No idea what these things are going to be used for, but I know, like I said, there is a crafted element to this game. So we got some materials. So now if we add, if we put him back to the tree, we can't forge again with a him because it's darkened out. Actually, I'm not sure if you could forage... Let's see if we could forage with her. No, we can't because it's a bit forced. So you can't forage with anybody. It's one per character. That's it. Once one character does it, it's done. I assumed it was that, but I didn't. never tested it. So we could, you know, head over to this other tree to get more materials. Um, the well, kind of, like I said, kind of heals us up. Um, and these materials might be useful. There's no enemy. So we still have one moving point left. So three. We could go one, two, three to get near here. The next turn go one, four, two, three, one, two, three to get... Yeah, let's do that. One, two, three. Why not? I don't know how the timer works in this game. I guess we'll find out. We're kind of taking our time now, but we did beat up everybody out here. So it's worth a little running around. So let's end phase. All right. Resolve infection and terror. Each hero discard a fatigue. We have no infection or terror on any of our characters. And it's a hero phase, so we're going to go back with Varix again. We'll go one by the tree. Let's let's forge this one. This is recompense. We have eleven metal from some moldy baubles, one mortos from some widow's bloom. Okay, so that's one, two, three for the movement. Free movement, action, last action, move in, one, two, three, we'll go around here to the other side of the well. 
and then we have Bryn by the chest. So let's open that up. So Bryn, looking to open up the chest. The chest is locked. Uh, test might. Facing the require a true amount of feet of strength. So these are the tests where the more might you get, the better. You put it in, and normally, if it's anything like Journeys in Middle Earth or, or Mansions of Madness, um, it'll remember how many successes you got, and you could kind of build up to open it into something. You might not get it in the first try, but the first try helps make the second try easier. So we need a might test. She is plus two at it. So that is one... One, two, three, four. Surge, add a success. So five. You're closer to opening the chest, but still some effort is required. All right, we're gonna try again. Oh, whoops. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six with our might. That should get this bad boy open. They have taken much. No, we take it back. There we go. The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. Eleven minerals and nine herbs from the blood spices. Hmm. Twenty metal from a glowing core. Fortified haft recipe. Ooh, we got a recipe. A haft, which is normally I believe like the kind of the what you hold from a weapon, right? A haft. Could be wrong on that. Um, but like the... Uh, well, the haft of like an axe or something. But who knows? What do I know? I live in Dyer, Indiana. What do I know? Continue. Good. Grab it and keep moving. You reach into the strange shadow under an old cloth. Biting cold nips at your fingers. But you do not withdraw your hand until you find the treasure within. Oh, she found more. The fallen has been added to your inventory to be used later. Imper imperceptible cape. Okay. Nice. We also get a cape. Alright, now let's move Bryn to the door, which we will be entering next turn. And she has done two actions to open the chest and then a free move to get to the door. We are all ready to go end our phase hopefully taking our time isn't going to really hurt us much time passes each hero describes a fatigue which is good we get another fatigue off of barracks and back to the hero phase okay we are outside this gate we gotta get this door open Bryn is standing there so I'm thinking Bryn is the one to do it so let's do a test on the door. It is strange for a Baronial Watchtower to be locked. Something is not right. Brid is on guard. Test might five. So this time it is a actual test that we need five successes. We know what we need. We just got to get it. So we have two might here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got seven. We passed easily. Pass. The door gives way to your efforts. Remove this door. All right, the door has been removed. Hello. Oh, and we're added. Maps frequently have levels of elevation. When placing tiles that are elevated, those tiles are supported by inserting them into pillars. Each pillar can be attached to the map in two ways. A notch that depicts a gargoyle or a notch that does not depict a gargoyle. Huh. We constructed any elevated portion of the map. Reference the map to ensure the pillars are oriented in the same way and the app displays. Press place 16A, four short pillars, and one staircase. All right, we're going to be building up a map here. So let me get that all built up, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, so I turned the uh, map. I didn't like the way it was going sideways. I just didn't think the angle was look nice enough for it. Um, what I did do was I kind of got rid of some of the back part of the map that I don't think we're going to be messing with anymore, hopefully. If something does happen, I'll have to add it back on. Um, so the first air entrance part, I just got rid of. So we are now kind of sitting here. Here's the well. There's the chest. Actually, the chest should be removed after we looted it. Um, 
Here is our doorway we just opened. If we move this out of the way, you can see what was built up. We have a staircase leading up. We have two doors up here. Another staircase leading up to a gate. So, you can obviously move these things out of the way to get a better view of stuff if you need to. You know, it does look kind of neat with it all, all built up. So continue. Spawn the following enemies. Orange Zealot. Hey, you Zealots. All right, Orange Zealot goes here. By the door. Find the keys to the gate. Zero out of four. That's the only enemy that spawned? What? We played with four players. Three enemies spawned in this area. All right, which makes sense, but I wasn't so sure how this would have changed it up. But only one enemy. All right, so one zealot. We got to find four keys. The keys to the gate. So obviously this gate, you click this bad boy and it is locked with four locks. We have a door here, a sturdy wooden door, doesn't say it's locked. Another sturdy wooden door, doesn't say it's locked. And we have that zealot to worry about who's technically right here. All right, and it is Bryn's turn. She used an action to open the door. And what do we know about these zealots? Do we know what their weakness is? They have a weakness to slashing, which is what Bryn has right now. So we gotta get her up there. So for ease, I'm just gonna move this out of the way so we can easily see what's going on here. All right, so Bryn's gonna move up one, two, three on these steps. Can't quite get to the enemy, unfortunately. Unfortunately, these guys move like crap, but they don't have uh, they don't have range. Um, we'll go with another move since Brent is on the defense side of her card. She doesn't have her outmaneuver ability right now, so we'll just move her one, two, and because of the impeding, actually no, we're gonna go one, two. We're not next to him yet, and then three get adjacent to the enemy. And that'll leave some open spot here. Hopefully for, I don't know if Varys can get in there or not. But she opened, action opened the door, then two maneuvers to get to that position, and she's done. So now Varix is way back here by the well. He only has three movement, so he's going to have to run his butt off to get up there. So we got one, two, three. He does have reach, but I don't know if he's going to get close enough to get her. Then one, two, three. Technically, he can attack from two spaces away, but that block that opened in right here might affect it. And I'll, I could show you how the app works, which is pretty cool. It'll actually tell you line of sight from a space to a space because characters don't matter for line of sight, remember. Only um, things in the way like trees or, or, or gates or doors or the edges of maps. So if we click down here and we go to line of sight, we click on a space that we want to test line of sight from. Varix is standing right here. Boom. So now this tells us all the red marks around the X is melee. All the so obviously that's within that can be hit. Anything orange is reach up to two spaces away. Anything yellow is normal ranged. You can see, unfortunately, the only square that is not have line of sight from where he is is this one in the corner here, this black square right there. And of course, that is where our zealot is standing. So he cannot hit the zealot from where he is, even though he can hit from two spaces away. Because it would be going outside of the, uh, the line will go through the, the out part of the map.
that open in there. All right, so now we know. So there's no arguments in line of sight anymore. Not that there should be. It's a co-op game, but still, it helps. So that's it. We're done. So the Zealot's going to go first here. We couldn't get up to him. All right, each hero may discard a fatigue. So we are totally unfatigued now. Varric, again, they hate him. Target Varric's Zealot. Uh, three range, three damage, three, da um, movement. Now, the good thing for Varix is that, well, this guy can move, but he couldn't hit him either from where he was. Varix could get him, but he can maneuver one space. And because he started adjacent to an enemy, he only has one movement point. Uh, so he could go back one and get him because of he can go diagonal that way. Or he can go forward one to the left and get him. I think he would probably go back because then he's supposed to try to move them in the, you know. If he goes here, he's surrounded by two enemies. If he goes back here, he only has the one enemy next to him and he can still attack. You know, Vera could technically attack because he has reach. But I think he would back off more than run in. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to back him off one space. He can already move one because he's impeded by us. And now he's going to attack Varric for three damage. Varric gets a orange die for defense. To try to block this. He gets two successes. Alright, not bad. He doesn't have anything else here though to help him. Brynn has her defense ability up to fatigue to add a success, but she's not adjacent to him right now. And he doesn't have anything else. He didn't get any surges. Yeah. So he's going to take one damage, which is obviously not too bad. Done. The zealot screams an alien incantation, foreign, but for a single name, Bryn. Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. What? If you didn't roll... Oh, now I missed it. Can I go back? Oh, you can. Nice. After all dice, if the target did not roll a surge, they infect their hero card. So we actually have that happen in here. He didn't roll a surge. So, infect the hero card. Remember, infection is at the end of the round. He's going to keep taking the damage until he flips his main hero card over, basically. So, infection is when time passes, suffer one damage for each infected card. Alright, I'm glad I was able to go back on that. Okay. So, he is going after Burin next turn, it looks like. But we hopefully could get, get end this guy before that happens. Uh, Bryn is up. We're going to start with her. She's going to go with an attack with her Warding's Blade, which we know he's weak to. And she gets a Black Knight attack. We have a success and a surge. The weapon doesn't have a surge, but she does. Add a success, and an adjacent hero may discard a fatigue. No one's adjacent. So that's two successes. Nothing else we could do there. But he is weak to it, so eight damage. She's got ten hit points left. Continue. Um, I think Bryn's just going to keep hacking away. Why wouldn't she? Bryn. Back to the Zealot with the Warblade. Another success and a Surge. Which is going to be two again. There's nothing we could do here to change this. A defense. Oh, we could fatigue the card. During your attack or defense, if you are adjacent to another hero, add one. Oh, we're not adjacent. Dang it. 
So that blade is really only good, it's better if you're adjacent to a hero. So all we got is two again, so confirm. Boom, two damage left on this guy, continue. And then we have, all we have left is a maneuver. I think we're going to maneuver next to the door. We can only move one space because we're starting next adjacent to this zealot. We're impeded. So we'll move on one space next to the door, try to open it next turn. And Varix is, can actually attack from that position. Because of his reach, we could test line of sight if we wanted to. So he is on top of the stairs. He's right here. The zealot is right there. So, yes, he got his reach line of sight to the zealot. So he can go for that, or, but we already know the zealot doesn't like piercing. Does it like crushing damage? You know what? We're going to change it up a little bit. We've been using that spear this whole time. for Just because we're going to use an action to flip our card over. Flip over our weapon. And we have this Iron Thorn War Bell that we haven't used yet. We're going to use our maneuver to go up one here. We're actually going to go one, two to get adjacent to this guy. The War Bell does not have reach, so we have to be right next to it. But this is a crushing weapon, which we haven't tested out on these zealots. And then we're going to attack that zealot with our War Bell. And we roll or a blue. And we get a success and a surge. Alright, one success. One surge on the war bell. During your attack, add two success and expose the enemy. Now expose causes, I believe, sorry about that. Twenty Plus 20% 20 hero attack damage if the enemy has expose on it. So I'm going to expose him. Two more successes. This thing is going to get wasted. Is this the path to a better future? And he is a Galna. It is the path to a better future. They are just things. All right. So we get... The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. One Curios and three Herbs from a Bloody Festoon. Eight gold. Remove Zealot. Alright, so we got through that part. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So that was... Uh, we flipped a card, we moved, and then attacked. And because he was impeded, his movement points had ended. So you can't keep moving with him, even though he technically has some left. That being impeded just a lot, lost the rest of his movement points for that round. That move. So we are stuck here for the end of the next round. I'm going to break down this a little bit farther in so I have some uh, more room to work with and continue on in the next round here. All right, so I just kind of got rid of the rest of the outside because I don't think we're going to be heading back that way. And if we do for some reason, I'll just rebuild it up. Um, we are by this door. We got that door over there, and we need to find four keys. Um, we are also at the end of the phase. So that's end phase. Doctor's phase. Infection and terror. Ishiro gets rid of a fatigue. Unfortunately, Varix has an infection on him. So he takes a damage. I kind of forgot about that, to be honest. Now the best way to get... I mean, there's maybe a way to get rid of it. Um, actually, if he has a surge here, you can add one success and any hero may discard one condition. I probably should have did that instead of this one last time because we were going to kill him anyway. Another way is to flip the card and then you lose any tokens that are on it. But this side does have a heal, which I kind of wanted to use now, but we'll see how we do. Alright, so I guess Varix will open the door again. Oh, not Varix, I'm sorry. Unless something else happens here. Nope, hero phase. Bryn is going to open this door. She's right next to it. The door swings open, revealing a small cellar. Remove this door. My door. Oh, we have some map to build. It looks like we have a staircase going down and some shelves down there. So I need to get that together. 
All right, here we go. We got a staircase leading down into a room with some shelves. A baronial guard lies unconscious in the corner, covered in deep gashes. Oh boy. Place one explore token. So that is the explore token, the other side of the site tokens. So we have an explore token there, something that we can obviously explore. That guard, I think I know him. A look of worry crosses Bryn's face. Only Bryn may interact with this token. Okay, that's cool. So that's a character specific action. So she's already opened the door. I'm trying to remember, is opening a door an action? I would assume it is, because it's exploring, right? <clears throat> Interact with terrain or a token, it has to be an action. It has to be. Let me see if there's a thing about doors. I know, I, I think I already know the I just want to look, because I'm like that. They don't even have door. Okay, they have... Actions. Maneuver, explore, fight, ready, unique. It would be an explore action. Allows a hero to interact with explore tokens at 3D terrain. Yeah, it's because we had to drag to the door. Yeah, it's an action. I figured it was. Just wanted to double check. Because that's going to actually mess up her ability to get to this guy in this turn. Because she has a free move. One, two, three. But of course she's not close enough to interact with him this turn. Um, she could get to a spot where she could interact with both of these things. So she's going to go her other maneuver. One, two, three. And get here. I think Varix might want to try to interact with this, with this, because uh, I think most of these items, like the tree and the well, they tend to have multiple options, and not just one, which is kind of cool. Like, you might be able to look for certain things. So Varix, even though he's down there, he could go to the door, but I think he's going to head down. I think the first thing Varix is going to do, though, is flip his card over, to be honest, because he wants to get rid of this effect token. So we're going to flip this over to the other side, which we haven't, I don't know if we've even been on this side with him. He has Survivor, two Fatigue, during your attack, and one Surge. Um, so he's going to flip over, and then he's going to head six, basically get six movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can get close, but not quite to that uh, shelf. And then we're going to end our phase. Uh, revolve infection here. We got rid of the infection. Nobody has any fatigue. Move on. Hero phase. All right, we're gonna start with Bryn and the, the soldier down here. An elderly soldier lies unconscious near the entrance to the tower. Deep gash is cut, cut across his armor. From your belt, you pull out a small water skin and lift the guard's head to drink. The wetness on his lips revives him. He squints slightly at you. It can't be. Lady Bryn, I remember you was a weird child. As a wee child. You and Lady Catherine playing together. My, how you've grown. Be careful, Lady Bryn. The Uthak's attack against us was unlike anything I have ever seen in my years of service. A powerful blood witch led them, accompanied by bandits and zealots. I only heard snippets, but she said something about calling on a demon from beyond the veil. Whatever she is planning, if she succeeds, it would be our downfall. He pulls himself up to rest against the darkened corner of the cellar. You'll need this to go through the gate, at least to aid you on your journey. He passes you a key and two vials. Nice. Discard this. Explore token. This is ours by right of salvage. Gra gain the following cards. Two Viger... Vigor? Potions? Viger potions? We've got to grab those two cards. All right. It is a limited card. 
Uh, Guardian Potion, Bryn or Kel... Kelly? Kalai? Kalai? I don't know. How do you say that? Before your or an adjacent hero's defense, ignore the attack. What? Yes. I don't know if there's a, a limited amount of cards that each character can have. I haven't seen anything about it. Not to look. Gain the following cards one Guardian Potion. The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. Five bone and nine leather from a hooded skull. Fourteen herbs from some devil's pollen. Underneath the chest you find a small key. Of course we do. Find the keys to the gate. Four out of four. You have found all the keys you need to open the gate. Open the gate. Alright. So we have... That chest goes away since we... Uh, uh. Opened it. We have six movement left. Two movements. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll move her up here. And I think we'll have Varric just open the gate this round. I don't want to keep waiting around. So let's, uh... Varric should be open it. We have four as a team. And let's say anyone specific had to open the gate. So let's have Varric. Let's have Varric do it. Slide in the four keys into their respective locks. You hear a soft click. The gate swings open easily. Remove the gate. And we have a large room. Place tile 17A and four tall pillars. All right, I'm going to have to start building this up. All right, so we have this built up here. We've opened the gate. We have a large area with a table, two berserkers, and these marks are two frightened villagers behind the berserkers. So, interesting little... Here's my sprite um, commercial. There you go, sprite. Give me, send me a dollar. Um, Alright, so we open us up and we are heading in. Two berserkers, the Uthak, stand near the shaken villagers. One looking out on the horizon, as though waiting for a signal. Save the villagers, zero of two. Alright, so that's what we got. Let's see what we got going in this room. We have a table. The sturdy stone table is artfully carved. There is a potted succulent and a jumble of knickknacks scattered across it. And then we have these villagers. The chains around this villager are covered in strange markings written in blood. Three of them require a strong will or an insightful mind. So will or insight, sounds like. They both say the same thing. Oh no. The chains around this villager are thick and locked firmly. Loosening them require an agile hand or great physical might. So each one is better for a certain character. That's kind of cool. Alright. Well... Do we know anything about these Berserkers? We have two in here. What are they weak to? Is that... I can't tell. Is that Pearson? I think they're weak to Pearson, yeah. Okay. Alright, so we are going to get moving in with Varix here, I think. I kind of don't want him to go in there all by himself. That might be a bad idea, actually. But we need to save these villagers. Varix would be better on this side, because this is the side where we need insight or will, which he's good at. We do have a free flip of his... So we're going to... Okay, we're going to... So far he's done an action, right? Okay. We're going to flip this card for free by using our token here that we got earlier we're gonna flip it to the spear which does piercing damage and has reach and then we're going to head up so he had one action he has a free move one two he's gonna move here in the corner try to get as far away from this guy as we can this other one and he's gonna use his reach on his spear to go after green 
uh, Berserker here, I think, is the plan. We also have a reroll available. So, let's do it. So he gets a blue die for attacking. So Varix is going after a green Berserker with his spear. That Berserker is 18 health and 1 armor. And he's also angry. The enemy's damage is permanently increased by one. All right, let's see what we could do on him. Let's get a good roll. All right, we got a success and a surge. Is that what we want on this die? What else we got here? One surge, success surge, success advantage. Two successes. Yeah, it's about as good as we can get. The surge is actually good with his spear. So, one success. With his Surge, we add two success and enfeeble the enemy. Which means he does less damage this round. Um, we can add a Surge with two fatigue, which gives us another success. Is that... So for two fatigue, we can add a surge and spend that surge here. We don't want to discard. There's no conditions to discard right now. So, you know, we do have a Vagar potion to get rid of stuff. So we might as well, let's do it. Let's do it. So two fatigue during your attack, add a surge. We're going to spend that surge here because we already spent it on the card. You can only spend it once per you know turn or attack. Add one success, and any hero may discard one condition. We don't have any conditions, so now we have four successes and an enfeebled enemy. Confirm with weakness. That could potentially be sixteen damage if he doesn't block. Not going to kill him, but it's going to knock him down very low. It did 16 damage because he didn't block. And because he's weak to the pierce. That is sweet. All right. That was pretty awesome. Um, so we opened the door. We moved and did our maneuver and did our action to attack. And so we are done. And it took Bryn forever to get here. Unfortunately, she's kind of behind. But that's okay. Hopefully they don't go after these. Uh... Hopefully they don't go after these prisoners before we get in there. So I could use my Viger Potion to heal up to full health at 8. That might be a good idea, actually, because I don't know. These guys bite more... Mo bleh. Both might come get Varix, and if they do that, with only six health, there's a chance that we could could get knocked out. I could save it to heal the fatigue, but I think I'm going to heal. I don't want to flip this card yet because we have a free reroll. Um, not that I have an action left. I think I'm going to use it. During your turn, you or an adjacent hero either heals three or discards three. It doesn't say you have to use an action. So we're going to heal back up to 8. We're going to heal back up to max health, just in case we get uh, smacked around here. Let me get, sorry about that. 8 health, back up to 8. Okay. Now end phase. Yes, because, I mean, we started with, I get confused, even though there's only two characters sometimes. We did start with Bryn. She just didn't make it to the door yet. All right, we don't have infection or terror. We get rid of one of those fatigues anyway that we just got. Ugh, green berserker, not a happy camper. Bloodlust. After the defense, the berserker shifts one toward and attacks a second hero if possible. He won't be able to do that. So he has four movement, four damage. So he's just going to move up one. So he's not messing with the villagers at least. He's going to attack Varix for four. 
4 damage. Varix rolls an orange die for defense. Two successes. That's a pretty good roll. What's our other options here? We have two successes. Sorry. This is what we got. We have two successes and a f advantage. We have... Okay. You know what? I'm going to re-roll it. Just to spend that re-roll. Hopefully we can get something with three marks. Nope, two successes again. That's fine. So we took four damage. We blocked two of them. We're down to six. Health. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, so he's done. And the Berserker's going after Bryn. Four movement. One, two, three, four. He can't reach Bryn. So... If I remember correctly, on the enemy's turn, if they cannot reach... This is what I was scared of. If they can't reach the hero that they're gonna, they're trying to target, that they're going to go for the nearest hero. Yeah, if he moves four, he cannot get to Bryn in any way. You can actually fall down these things. You don't take damage. So you could go from one level to the other. He could go here. Like one, two, three, four. Even so, he's still two spaces away. These guys don't have reach. So what he's going to do is go one, two, three, four, and head over to Varix. Now Varix got doubled up. All right. And... That's five damage on Varix. So we need to roll. Let's roll something good here. There we go. Three, a three one. So we got one success. We have a surge and one success. And any hero may discard a condition. And we have, a, and we can add a fatigue for another success, which we will do. So that's a total of three blocks on the five damage. So we take two damage. Six to four, but that's he's getting low now. All right, done. The berserker howls, wide eyes, gazing at Bryn with an unfathomable rage, which means they're probably going after Bryn next round. At least the at least the uh, the one is. All right, we're saving. Bryn's got to get in this fight, man. He can't get up there. One, two, three. These Berserkers are weak to Pearson. I think, I'm sure we hit one with the Warhammer at one time. So I'm hoping Slashing is what they're also weak to. So we'll keep the sword out. So Brynn is going to do our maneuver. We have, we could flip the card. And then use shift three to get up near him and still attack. So that's action. Nah. Well, action to flip. Action to move up. And attack. Nah, it'd be better, I think, to go with this side. We get more attacks. We also have many potions here. So Brynn is going to... He's going to maneuver. She's going to maneuver. One, two, three to get here. And then also adjacent to Varix, which is good. That she's going to go after the orange berserker. With the warden's blade. He hasn't been hit yet. She gets black die for her roll. Oh boy. Alright. He is weak to Pearson that we know of. And he has one other weakness that we haven't found. So let's see if this could be it. Alright. So we have three successes. Straight up three successes. Nice. 
That should be nine damage with maybe blocked. For two fatigue, we can during you or Jason the Hero's defense add a die. For two fatigue, during your attack or defense, if you're adjacent to another hero, add a success. Well, let's spend it. Spend them while you got them. Two fatigue on that card. We don't have any on there. We are adjacent to Varix, so we can add another success for four successes. Confirmed. 12 damage. Not weak. Uh, what's left? We got Slashing, Piercing, Crushing. I'm pretty sure I hit the Berserk with Crushing. Uh, Varix might have killed that other Berserker straight up because it was weak to Piercing. I can't remember earlier in the game. There may be uh, there may be a magic type of damage too, so who knows. Six health left. But, you know, the good thing is we have another attack. We moved. We did a free move. We run up. And then we attack, so we have another attack. So let's go after this guy again. The blade. Three more successes. Wonderful. So that should, that should definitely be enough to take him out without any other stuff. To me! Forward! Nine damage. They have taken much. Now we take it back. The followers are added to your inventory to be used later. Six minerals from some blood spices. Remove the orange berserker. Nice. Continue. All right. So now we have Varix's turn. Correct? Yes. We started this round with her because Varix ended the last round and then got ganged up on and then she came in to help. I would like to get Varix over by the token, but because of the movement, one, we can only go one in space here. He doesn't have a shift ability. But that spear, this guy's weak to spear, so we're just going to attack him. With the spear, she gets a blue die. A surge and an advantage. We're definitely going to spend the surge on the spear. Two successes and enfeeble. Well, that's going to actually kill him alone. We don't have to worry about the other thing. This one is finished. So here's a goddess. This is right. The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. Six minerals from some blood spices. Remove a green berserker. Okay. Now we need to get up. We'll do our free maneuver. One, two. To get here. So we attacked. Now for another action we can interact with this token. The chains around this village are covered in strange markings written in blood. Test insight or will. Oh, nice. We got an option. Well, Varus gets a plus two for will, so we'll do that. All right, that's five. And then plus two is seven successes. The chains are release around the villager. He thanks you breathlessly. When they came for us so boldly, kidnapping us both in the middle of the day, I thought we were done for. The blood witch told the guards to keep a lookout for the red light. He points out to the distance. At that moment, we were to be sacrificed to strengthen her power. Discard this explorer token. Well, that doesn't sound good. Save the village is one of two. All right, and that is Varix's turn, so we have to go to an end phase. Hopefully nothing pops out at us. Discard a fatigue. Each character. Right back to hero phase. Save in. Alright, so now Bryn can hopefully get over. So we got... Can we hop on the table? I don't know if we can hop on the table. I think... I don't think so. Uh, one, two, three. One. So she only has one try at this. This round. Test might or agility. Her might is plus two. One, two, three, four, five, plus two, six, seven. I don't think we need to spend the fatigue. Nice. 
The chains fall away from the, as the person rises. Thank you. Beware the strange magic of that blood witch. She is more powerful and more sinister than you could imagine. Her forces manage to ambush us in the fields in broad daylight. They grow bold and dangerous. Discard this explorer token. Continue. Save the villagers, two out of two. Have the Uthok captured other citizens? Bryn asks urgently. Not here. I don't know. I don't think, answers one of the villagers. But folk have gone missing more in recent days. Rumors said it was the Uthok, but I didn't believe until, well, now. With the path behind you clear of foes, you send the villagers towards safety while you turn your attention onward. From the parapet, you see a bright red light flash in the dense woods. The thickness of the tall treetops obscures your view below. Whatever evil plot the Uthok are working has taken effect. You look to each other. Now is the time to stand and fight. Forthorn is my home. My people, my land are in grave danger. Whatever is given this evil such strength and brashness must be defeated. It is for the good of... Bryn chooses... The barony or the people? We went Valor. Let's go Valor with her. Again, the people. I see the same evil in the Uthok as I saw in the Dragon Lords, built on the sacrifice of the innocent. I will not rest until those who would rule by fear are destroyed, Rebellion, Varric says. Oh, so we're not done yet? Place tile 1B. 